everybody. Welcome, everybody, to the 47th episode of the American Idiot Show. 47. Can you believe 40? I'm just going to keep saying, can you believe it? Every episode. Bro, up until maybe 50. 50. Three oh, in that big 5 0, man. We're, we, uh, we, uh, we got, what are we going to do for the big 5 0? What about, uh, number 15? Oh, channel, channel, man. Okay. Yeah. I, oh, 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 okay. Oh, so you're too big for this channel now to give me ideas? Is that what it is? No, I'm not a fan of TV. episode 50. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Big up everybody who is watching. Big up to the four inside. Big up everybody watching on playback. Make sure you're smashing the likes. Make sure you're smashing the subs. Make sure that you are subscribing to CMO Sports and Oregon Goon. And of course, we have... The man, the myth, the legend. Every single time this guy comes on this show, you know yeah. you're about to get educated. You know you're about to like pick up a couple IQ points. You know what I mean? About football, about life. We oh. got the one and only Kyle Washgunner joining us today. Big up, Kyle. How are you, my friend? You good? I'm all good, TJ. It's great to be here sharing the screen with you three legends and the chat. <clears throat> it's a pleasure. It's a privilege. I love us. I love being part of this community, and I'm looking really far to this show. Big up to Trius. Yeah, big, big up, up every single time. Every single time. Dal, how are you doing, man? You good? I'm doing great. It's Friday. We've got Kyle Walsh in the building, and uh, we've got some people in the chat. I see some familiar faces, and yeah, let's get it. Yeah, absolutely. Happy birthday, absolutely. Tiana. Happy birthday, Tiana. I heard that in another stream. Yeah, Shout happy birthday. Absolutely, absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, Happy birthday, myself. AFC Always' is, uh, daughter, Tiana. Absolutely. Big up every single yeah, time. Man. Thank you, AFC Always, yeah, for coming man. by. Happy, Happy birthday, young one. Have a great time. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, Connor, how are you doing, man? You meant to bow when you talk about me, by the way. I'm not <laughs> <laughs> no, listen, I'm all good. Listen, I swear to God, I could not have waited for this work day to be over, man. It was a long day. I'm happy to be here with you guys, talk some football. And uh, yeah, as as Lee Gunner would say, cheers, guys, and uh, we drink. Cheers. What are you drink? What are you drink? What are you drinking? What what I'm is a that? Couple bugs, man. I'm a couple bugs. No, oh, okay, okay. I'm on the oh, non-alcoholic Heineken, the Heineken Zero Zero. I'm hoping for a sponsorship here. It is <laughs> incredible. It is. I'm, I, on, I, the, I, I'm on the black the black current. Yeah, you're not, you're, not, you're not a drink, are you, Carl? You're not a drink, are you? I, I don't want to drink. I Good gave man. drink up. I'm so, I gave drink up twenty. 24 years ago, I had to, wow. or it was going to be in serious, serious trouble. So, yeah. good man, fair play to you. Fair 20 play. years Here's ago, and man, and this guy, and this guy's, he's going strong. That's incredible. Yeah. Nice one, Carl, bro. Nice That's one. Awesome, I, had, I had to, it was uh, for me personally and for my family as well. So, uh, and I'm glad I did because now I have a beautiful daughter and Mm -hmm. I can share great times with her, and I don't miss the drink. My missus likes mm -hmm. to have a drink, and we go out, like tomorrow night, for example, we go out to the pub, have a few drinks. I sit there all night drinking seven up, or Lucas said, Red mm -hmm. Bull, whatever. Nice. And I still, and I still have to crack. I'm still up for the buzz. So that's it. That's that's just me. So thank love God it. I'm here to tell you. Nice call, mate. Nice I love one. it, man. I've, I've, I've been. Gave, go ahead. The two, reasons, the two reasons you gave are the only two reasons, bro. Yourself and your family. No yeah, facts. Nothing else matters. Facts. One hundred percent facts. Nothing but facts. I I I I gave it up. I've given it up for nine days, and I'm bored. So uh, <laughs> those are. <laughs> so, I don't drink that after myself. Once it, in a while, I'm gonna go have a drink in a couple weeks with, with the boys. I'm going out of yeah. town to go camping and stuff. But that's really it. I mean, I just I don't sit around and drink beers all day. No, nah, me neither. Nah. Me neither. Me either, but but you know, night catch a little buzz while I'm getting while I'm getting at my butt kicked on EAFC 24. You know, it is yeah. what it is. Yeah, um, yeah, we, uh, yeah we got to get the re no, I don't need, uh, yeah, maybe maybe to entertain <laughs> the people, maybe to entertain. I'm waiting for FIFA 25. I don't know about you guys, but that game is, uh, I'm, I'm still all, FIFA. all right. <laughs> all right, guys, let's get into the football. Big up everybody inside, make sure you're smashing the like, Acer. Acer's saying West Hammer on for the trouble against Arsenal. That's something that we're going to get into. But the, the 
I don't know about you guys, but I, I know we all go on to different channels. We go on to Jez's channel. We go on to Saad's channel. We go on to Flawless's channel, all these different yeah, channels, right? Absolutely. And the question that I've been getting asked over and over and over and over again is, are Arsenal truly in the title? I want to go around and get everybody's answer because I have my answer, like, statistically, but I just have a feeling that uh, – I'm not committing because I feel like I'm going to get abused again. You know what I mean? So I wanted to talk to Kyle. I wanted to get educated from Kyle Walsh Gunner here on his thoughts. Kyle, are we in the title race? Uh, we are on a false basis. We're there, thereabouts, and we got a big result against Liverpool. And because we got that big result against Liverpool, now all of a sudden we are now – Seemingly in a type of rest. <clears throat> now let's cast our memory back to last week. If we lost that game, we would be eight points behind Liverpool, and no one would be talking about us being in at the hunt to win the Premier League. Yeah. So one result, and now all of a sudden we're in for a great chance to win the Premier League. Let me get something straight. And it's a very sad thing for me to say. Arsenal Football Club will never. Win a Premier League title, honour this manager. Never. That includes this season. Forget about it. Manchester City will win the league title and they'll win it easy. Easy. Trust me on it. Now, what I don't like as a fan, 39 years as a fan, I thought it was absolutely shambolic the celebrations that took place last Sunday after that Liverpool game. I don't mind the lads celebrating. We all celebrate a win. There's no problem. But there's a line that you don't cross, and unfortunately, they, they crossed that line. Now I'm after hearing on YouTube channels this week that Odegaard celebrations was from a true captain, a true leader. Now, I never saw Tony Adams do that. I never saw Patrick Vieira doing that. And they had all the rights in the world to do that because they were champions. What the fuck has Odegaard won? Nothing. What has he achieved? Nothing. Why weren't all celebrating like they were after winning the World Cup? The big Liverpool football club who ended up, who turned out, who, who never turned up. And it's a home game. And we're going around celebrating like that. In, a, in the Emirates Stadium. It's embarrassing what I watched. And it, it disappointed me. After a great result, I was hyped like we all were. But when I saw them celebrations going on, I just said to me, what are you doing? What are you doing? Clowns. Take a photograph. Did you ever see anything in your life like Does Man City do that? No, they don't. What does Man City do? Wins big titles year in, year out. I don't see him carrying on like that. Do you see the brain of doing what Odegaard was doing? Because I don't. It's embarrassing. Now it's time for people to start waking it up and realizing reality. And the reality is we haven't got the squad to win the Premier League. And I will be pro right. I told yourself and then back in November that yeah. we will that we will be nothing. And I'm here today telling you we're with nothing. Nothing. No. No point doing the celebrations last Sunday and no and not showing up against West Ham this Sunday. No, let's see, let's see what we have now in the let's see how we got the balls to go on now and do what what everyone thinks we're gonna do. And that's win the Premier League title. But Kai Watch Gunner is here to tell you it's all ain't happening. Hey. No, that's fair. And and look, it, it's I have a I I have a, a view a a view that you know I'm kind of glad that if they were going to do it, it was against Liverpool and, and, and like that like yeah do do I rate the celebrations not necessarily, but if you're going to do it, do it against Liverpool because the amount, especially the after the amount of crying that I saw from freaking Jurgen Klopp after we beat them. Oh well, the refs didn't do this. Oh well, we didn't get this call. Oh well, we didn't this get this call. It's like. What? You lost the game fair and square. They played terribly. I And I said this on the match reaction as well. It, it, yes, we did play well, but Liverpool played very badly. 
they it was it was one of their worst games of the season. And I know Dal, you're gonna I know Dal, you're gonna you're gonna disagree with me. So go ahead. No, it's not that I disagree. It's that we can only play guys who's in front of us. It's not our fault yeah. we have injuries. Because on the reverse side, they wouldn't give a shit if we had injuries. They wouldn't care if we were in or out of form. We went. We got the three points we needed to stay in the race. But Kyle made the very good point. We're celebrating, but we've won nothing. Right. We won nothing. Now, if City were to celebrate like that, like Kyle said, they have some right to do that, which they never would do because they are the champions. It's like we just won a big game. Settle down. I I was excited as well, and I didn't think you know it was a big, you know maybe it was you know a big deal for some than it was for me, but. To tell you the truth, I didn't really watch the endings. You know, once we won, I was happy. I jumped on the stream with you guys and all yeah, that. I didn't even see all that I didn't stuff. Really pay attention to, to be honest. But now that I've seen, you know, the clips and stuff, and it goes back to what I said before: we're doing things for social media. It's kind of just for social media exposure at times. And I think that is what Kyle's point is: is that deters from what we're trying to do. The yeah. social media, the photos, it, it's a it's a it's an obstacle, it's a mental obstacle that's getting in the way. You don't need to do that stuff. And it's deterring us from doing what we have to do and keeping the mindset of being winners and champions and pushing forward. You know, and, and maybe that's a bit extreme, but I but I fully see Kyle's point. We're not champions of anything yet. That was a that was a championship. Final like celebration that was pretty much uncalled for at home, but I'm extremely glad we got the three points. We are back in the race, but let's be honest: we drop every single. We have to win every single game here on out, and it's just not going to happen. There's no way we're going to win out the rest of the season. No way. Let's start and tell you something. So. We went. To, I, I remember back mm-hmm. in the back in the day, we went to Inter Milan or AC. Was it Inter Milan or AC Milan? Not, not a lot. Of- Ah, we bet him 5-1 over in the San Siro. Yeah. Robert yeah. Perez was sent there to that league. I yes, remember sir. Terry Henry single-handedly destroying Real Madrid in the Champions League. Yeah. I do not remember seeing the players going around react- reacting the way our players right. did last Sunday. It was embarrassing. Yeah, it's not professional. You know, it's embarrassing. Yeah, I agree. I mean, after hindsight, it's just like, okay, it's a big win. Let's get our egos in check and head down the tunnel. Because the job's not done. They were celebrating like we had won something. So I think you're right, Kyle. I look at it now in a different way. Like that's not the right thing to do. You know, just take your win and go and, and get back to business. You know? It's okay. like a boxer, David. It's like a boxer. If me and your if you're a world champion and I want to be world champion, and I beat Connor, and then I go on then and I beat TJ. No why you're number one. Contender. Now I'm at me jumping around celebrating and shouting and roaring mm-hmm. because I bet Connor and TJ on the <laughs> on the lead up to my big world heavyweight champion fight with you. But you knocked me out in the third round. That would never happen. You would egg on, egg, out of the hey, world. Hey, egg, egg on egg on face. Because that's what it's like. We're beating Liverpool in the in the Ember Stadium. We're right. jumping around for joy. Yeah. There you go. We could go out now on Sunday and get back by the West Ham. We could. You know what? We have to. We have to be real here. Right, but it's this. But but it's the thing. You know, Kyle. We've seen two different arsenals this season. We've seen the the Arsenal that played against Liverpool, and we've seen the shit side that's played against Fulham and West Ham. So I'm just curious, which Arsenal is going to show up? Right, this which one's going to show up, guys? I mean, what do you think, TJ Connor? Yeah. We're gonna we're gonna get we're gonna get into that, but I wanna I wanna reframe the question a little bit for Connor, um, because I want to get Connor in on this. Connor, I, I know you've been getting the same the same question asked. You know, like how did you feel about Jamie Carragher getting upset? How did you do this, that, and the other? My I guess my question for you: Did we over celebrate? And is it because not enough of our players have been there before? I think that's another thing too is that there's a lack of experience. We haven't won very much. So the mentality of getting a big victory is is really going to imp- impress on these guys. And what I'm not saying what they did was right or wrong. I'm just saying that not a lot of these guys have been there before. So getting a big victory like that, they're probably over the moon. But but Connor, what, what what's your take on it, man? I have nothing wrong with with celebrating to an extent. Um, listen, if Odegaard want, if if the if the Arsenal photographer wanted a photo of himself, then so be it. He's the he's the photographer. 
Did Odegaard need to take it? I don't know. But hey, listen, it is what it is. The the more the more the, the more thing I have the problem with is is the reaction from, from the fan base from it. Mm-hmm. I we're now going to win the league. We're now going to go ahead and do this and do that. Liverpool are no longer the Klopp's going into retirement now. He's this, he's that. I'm thinking. Now, don't get me wrong. We were better than Liverpool on the day. We were the better team. We deserved to win. We deserved to take three points. But a game against Liverpool in the 20, what is it, the 23rd game in the season doesn't hand you a league title. When we played yeah. Manchester City earlier on in the season, we beat them 1-0. Did that win us a league title? No. Every single game, and it's not just comparing them to everyone, but I'm just putting it in hindsight of how big the game was. Every game leading up to the 38th game in May is, is, is Liverpool. That's the, how we've got to treat it. It's playing Liverpool. West Ham, we're playing Liverpool. That's how you've got to treat it. Just because we beat Liverpool, which, by the way, was a massive win. I'm not taking that away from Arsenal. It was a massive, massive win, especially for this season. But the reaction, and I, and I knew this would happen. I knew there would be a selected amount of people who'd be like, we'll win the league now. I mean, it's not like City have a game in hand or anything. It's not like City are used to running away with league titles and carrying on. People, the, the message I have for people is, calm down. Calm down. How have we not learned from last season? How have we not uh-huh. learned? People seem to think if you beat the big teams, you've won everything. We drop points to, in no disrespect, West Ham, Brighton, Southampton, many more. It's possible. We could drop points on Sunday. But people seem to think as soon as we beat Liverpool and City, boom, we've won the league. Right. Like, where's the mentality? I'm, I'm 20 years old and I know that's not how you win a competition. You win the game. You win three points. You can take that home. You can you can have the free point. You can have the free points trophy, but you don't have the league trophy. Big up, she. So listen, listen. For me personally, I've got nothing wrong with the Arsenal players celebrating it. Nothing wrong with it. It's the reaction that when that the fan base is now giving off from it, saying yeah. things like Klopp's retired and all this stuff. He's a reti- He needs to go to a retirement home. Klopp's gonna. Klopp has done more at Liverpool than Arteta will ever do at Arsenal. Yeah. Your In actual fact. People need to wake up, smell the coffee, and realize that one win doesn't symbolize a season. It doesn't. It really doesn't. We nearly lost to Bournemouth last season. We need to drop points to Bournemouth last season, right? And um, we need we need to drop points to Bournemouth last season. And luckily for Reese Nelson, it's one of our, it's one of Arteta's most highlighted games because we got it in the last minute. You know. Yeah. So we've got to, fans have got to stop getting ahead of themselves. One game at a time. Listen, if it comes to May. And we're fighting against Liverpool or City. I'd be like, you, you know what? Have your say now. Go for it. We're in February. We've got four, three, four months left of the season. So much can change. We could drop points this week, next week, the week after that. So people need to stop just chatting rubbish. But like I said, more than happy for the players to celebrate it. I was celebrating it. It was a big win against Liverpool, who have, who in my opinion have been unbeaten since last year because that Spurs game was fraudulent. They should, they should have won that game. So in my mm-hmm. opinion, they were unbeaten. So that was a celebratory. That was a celebration for me. But like you, TJ, and everyone else, I was on the match reaction with you. We had our hour of celebrating, and it's back to business. West Ham. That's exactly how I put it. And for Jamie Carragher, your manager against Everton, celebrated on the pitch. So I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not having. See, he went onto the pitch and celebrated when Origi scored a goal. So I'm not having none of this bollocks about, oh, we're over-celebrating. So Jamie Carragher, uh-huh. have that. Your manager done that, but we're not allowed to celebrate. So have that. He's just salty. He's just I also have one thing to say about Jamie Carragher. He's a very lucky man that he didn't spit on my daughter that day. Yeah, fact. Because I want to stop the fucking car on the middle of the motorway and I want to box the head off. Absolute tramp. That fella should not be doing punitary work for Sky Sports for what he done. And Matthew Retissier, who was a wonderful football player, was sacked by Sky Sports for giving his opinion about the likes of Corvus and all the shite that's going on in the world today. Mm. And Sky Sports told him that we have to protect our name and our brand. Did they protect their name and brand when you had a tramp from Liverpool? Hawker on a young 14-year-old girl. No. He kept him in his job. He's just a very lucky man that wasn't my daughter because I would have kicked him stone out on the fucking middle of the road. Prick. 
Facts. Right. Absolute facts. <laughs> Smash the likes up, people. By the way, real, real, real quick. Let me say out of the chat real quick, 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 quick. Uh, big up, big up, Mama Flossie. Hello, Mama Flossie. Great to see the best mod on YouTube here. Big up, Mama Flossie. And we got, we got Sheik inside. Big up, Sheik. And Jamino obviously dropping his nuggets of knowledge in the chat as well. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Make sure you guys are smashing like seven if you're new. Go ahead, Dow. Sorry to interrupt. Commercial. Oh, no, I can't, I can't. Jamie Carragher is just disgusting. He's what, what won Champions League. I mean, he yeah. spent like 12 years at Liverpool or something. One, one, one man, club. one man, um, one club he's man. Speak on, yeah, I just, he's disgusting. I'm sorry. That's all I want to say. Mm. No, oh, absolute facts. He's an absolute loser. I, I'm I'm sorry. Yeah, I think I think this subs it out pretty well. Um, there was a good. Oh, by the way, I saw Vader in here. Big up Vader every single time. Um, Vader is a Man City fan, by the way. So he wants he, when he says this, when he says stuff like this, I think he's being sarcastic. So I always take it with a little bit of a grain of salt. This guy right here, but big up Vader. Uh, you can catch me and Vader on Staffy TV for American Waffle every single Monday night. Um. Jamino has got a question for Kyle. How many current players are good enough for uh, good enough for us to win the league title? How many current players? Saliba, Saliba, Saliba be good enough. Declan Rice will be good enough. Um, <laughs> Sackett, the jury is out on Sackett. I'll use the red Sackett, but the jury is out on him. That's 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 best facts. He hasn't kicked the ball in the last year and a half. Um, I'd say Saliba, Declan Rice, Saka, and Martin Eddy on the form he was seeing against Liverpool the other day. And apart from that, forget the rest of them. That's just my opinion. No, Gabriel? No, I wouldn't have. No, no. I think Gabriel, I think Gabriel's a weak thing, to be honest with you. I, I would like to see us in the summer buying in a better centre back than Gabriel. Uh, yeah, Gabriel Jesus was not good enough. He's always injured. Right. He would, he can't score enough goals. They didn't keep the We all know what he is. Trossard is basically a player that you bring on. If you start Trossard from the very start of the game, he's nowhere to be seen. Right, right. Odegaard goes missing in every game, as far as what I can see. Our tech is saying that Odegaard is after having a fantastic season. I don't know what season he's, he's talking about. Um, George Ingo had a great game against Liverpool, and I was the first to applaud him. A great performance. But he's not the answer. He's not good enough. El Nani, not good enough. Lagongo, not good enough. The list goes on. Shashenko, not good enough. Now everyone is hyping up Tommy Asu because he's getting an extension on his contract. He ain't fucking good enough. <laughs> Simple. And I'll tell you something. When this is all said and done, and when it comes to me, and when we're lifting no title once again, I will be proof right once again that these players ain't fucking good enough. <laughs> are you, I, I, so, okay, maybe, maybe we, we, we keep piggybacking off of this. So are you, Dal, are you still on the uh, the 10 man clear out over the summer uh, vibe or? Uh, it wasn't 10 man, but nine man, yeah. You want me to do the lift real quick? Yeah, yeah, go, list them off, okay. list them off. List? Okay. Zinchenko, <laughs> Reese Nelson, El Nenny. You yeah, keep track here. I'm going to lose my fingers. Zinchenko, Reese Nelson, El Nenny, Gabriel Jesus, um, Eddie Nketiah, um, Odegaard, uh, Jorginho, uh, Tommy Yasu, and El Nenny. You already said El Nenny. Okay, Cedric, but I think he's Okay, drawing. there you go. I was waiting for that one. I don't, I don't have Cedric, okay, that's Cedric. nine. Yeah, that's nine. Uh, yeah, that's nine. Right there. <laughs> you, get, you get rid of Tommy Asu, Dow. I don't think he's. The, I don't no. think he's that bad. But but oh my, I, you're right. They're not bad. But that's the thing, Connor. Is I want great. Why can't we have the best of the best that we can get yeah. through FFP at those positions? We're and then I go back to it again. We're a club that's a stepping stone club for players. They go from a smaller club to Arsenal to a bigger club. From a smaller club to Arsenal to a bigger club. How many players have we really retained over the last 15, 20 years? You know, that I mean, were worth we lost, anything? Well, yeah. I mean, we lost Thierry Henry, to, I mean, after the Champions League final, basically. Cesc Fabregas took off. Rabbit Van Persie took off. 
I mean, our defensive back four has been a shambles since Tony Adams left. Well, no, since Colo Torre and um, Saul Campbell and that lot, right? I mean, to be honest, it's really been bad since about 2005, 2006. I just, I mean, yeah, we've had some great experiences in the FA Cup, but I mean, how how often do we see Jack Wilshire? How often do we see Aaron Ramsey? I mean, we got Adebayor, we shipped him off, we shipped off Nazari, we shipped off Clichy, we shipped off Sagna. I, I can go down the list. Dante Corsola. <laughs> I mean, we've been, and, and I know that I know some, and I know some of the folks in the UK are, do disagree with me because of the history of the club. The, the 1800s, 1886, I, I mean, I get that. But Arsenal, to me, right now, again, is a stepping stone club. And I mean that it's just a club that players can go to who are of average to good talent but just can do something more and will do something more. Like Martinelli will not stay here. Saka over time will not stay here. There's our young players that are going to be on six, seven, eight-year contracts. I mean, as soon as Barcelona comes sniffing for Martinelli, he's going to go. I mean, I'm just – I'm trying to be realistic. So I think a lot of these players see Arsenal as a club that, oh, it has some pedigree and some stature, but it's not Liverpool City. It's not Inter, well, you know, Real Madrid, Barcelona, Bayern Munich. You know, it's just one of those clubs where I can get exposure and learn a lot and play, you know, with top, top players and push for something and maybe get a domestic cup. But in reality, the real goal of, I think, almost every player in the squad, and maybe except for Declan Rice, is to play at another club over time. Yeah. You no, see, I agree. The, question, the question is, Conroy, how do you ask in that about Tommy Asim? You see, the question you have to ask yourself, when you look at yourself in the mirror and you ask yourself about Arsenal, the question is, do you want Arsenal to win a Premier League title? And the, and the answer to that question is, for us all, is a big yes. Then you have to look at the, current, the squad of players that we have at our disposal that are taking the body for serious amounts of money. And you have to be real about it. We all love Arsenal. I love Arsenal. And you fight for him and all the rest of it, but you have to be real. Tommy Yasu is not the answer to win us a league title. Jorginho is not the answer. El Nene. And like that, there's eight or nine players there that has to go in the summer because they ain't good enough. Reese Nelson is at Arsenal for years. He's not the answer. Right. Right. Then he has to go. So what I'm trying to say is. We have to look at it, and you have to be real. And I'm sorry to say this, like I'm listening about, what I'm listening to now this week is about a pivot of Rice and Jorginho for the West Ham game. And if that's the way it should be now for the rest of the season. If we're relying on Jorginho to get us over the white line to win a Premier League title, mm -hmm. we're in worse trouble than what I actually think we are. And that's been reality, that's reality, that's real. It's the last over on FTV and all them channels, they're all delusional. They're, they're talking to get clickbaits and money, and it's all about that with them. It's a business for them, not for us. We stay real, we stay calm. These lads can talk shit all day long, James and Sayson and whoever else is over there, because that's all those talk shit. I'm telling yeah. you this here tonight, we're winning nothing with this group of players that we have. And then it's right, there's eight, nine, ten players needs to go in the summer. That's it. It's shocking. We're out to spend a serious amount of money for failure once again. Yeah. That's unfor unfortunate facts. Big up everybody inside, by the way. Make sure that you guys are smashing the likes. Make sure that you are commenting if you are watching on playback. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Um, I, I reply to every single comment. I reply to every single comment, even these dumb ones from Jacob at United Spurs of America. What an absolute loser. Hey, um, by the way, Jacob, I absolutely owned you on American Waffle. Don't make me play the clip. I'll, I'll do it. I, I will absolutely do it. Of you singing the Cootie Cootie song and your son crying and wanting you to stop. Like, I haven't forgotten uh, about that. Um, and also, but a clip of you, Jacob, too, of pictures of you when uh, we beat Liverpool going around. The <laughs> your happy face while you're so serious. So oh. enjoy Hold that, Jacob, you loser. 
Big up. <laughs> Try more. Yeah, big, big up, big up, United Spurs of America. Though another, another pa- fellow panelist on the American Waffle Show. Um, let's see, what do we got? What do we got here? Tommy, let's see. Jaminio says Tommy House is in good form, but I'm not sure if he's good enough. Maybe as a backup fullback, and that's it. Well, no, and I think he's impact. I, I, I've really enjoyed what Tommy House has put out there uh, so far this season. That being said. The key word for me this season has been consistency, right? So I think this is a good pivot over to, to West Ham because I know I know Connor's got to go here in a bit um, because we're, and we're going to redirect over to his channel to do his Arsenal Frenemies show. But I get I'm getting I'm getting here, here's my sticking point with why I think the West Ham game is honestly as important, if not more important than the Liverpool one. And here's why. We got four points off of Liverpool this season, if my math serves me correctly. Four points that I didn't think we were going to get. I thought we were maybe going to get one, maybe maybe two, right? That, that, that team's been in form. We were able to get two results out of them. Great. We've dropped three points to West Ham in the league and got absolutely thrown out, kicked in the ass, out of the cup. We, I don't get where all of this confidence is coming from that we're going to go to the London Stadium and run them over. And the only reason I say that is because of the amount of inconsistency we've seen out of this club. We get big results against Man City, Liverpool, uh, you know, big big teams in that area. But when it, when it comes to the lower the lower league teams, and I'm not saying that that West Ham is a lower side team. I'm not saying that, but they are a team that we should be beating. We're extremely inconsistent. Fulham, we dropped five points to. Mm-hmm. We dropped we dropped points to Newcastle when we should have beaten them away. So, Connor, I guess my question is, oh, man, they're they're here, by the way. Oh, Saad sent us. Oh, big up Saad for the raid. Big up Football Corner for the raid. Big up Saad. The Saad Army is here, everybody. We got Toxic Tash. We got the whole – we got Hellboy. We got the whole crew coming on over. So, thank you very, very much, Saad, for the raid. Big up. Make sure that you guys are – going over to the football corner and subscribing to sod. But Connor is consistency a, a, a fear or, or am I like seeing monsters under my bed at this point? Like I, I was told big up Tony Claude, but t- Tony Claude said, I, I shouldn't worry. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Tony, I love you, mate, but bloody hell. If we, if we know anything about watching Arsenal in the last how many years, and I think you can all agree on this, there's one word that describes Arsenal. In a league season, inconsistency, and that's the one word. Yep. We can have a massive, massive win against Liverpool, and we can go straight back to reality against West Ham. And that's the one thing you've got to be worried about. And listen, and sorry to rain on people's parade, but it's literally it's not just been this this um, this campaign that we've had under Arteta in terms of how long he's been here, but we've had a lot of inconsistencies under him. A lot of inconsistencies under him. And um, there's one thing I would like to say as well. If we do go against West Ham and we do go ahead and, and lose, then what are people going to be saying then? Because if we do that, by the way, Liverpool didn't matter. That, that win against Liverpool did My not matter exactly. at all. It did. That, that You might as well have just rinsed that game and counter out, you know? So we've got to be, we've got to be worried because this team, unfortunately, is used to being inconsistent and they don't turn up. We were so lucky to win against Forest. I'm telling you now, if they didn't have that, um, I'm gonna I keep rinsing his name. If they had their striker up front, don't ask me to say his name. I always, I always, I always screw his name up. Awani, too, I'm gonna say Awani. Awani, Awani. Yep, there it is. There it is. And if they had Alanga there as well, I swear to God, I think we would have dropped points there. Got one or zero. I seriously think that they had half the they had half their team at Afcon. I kept yeah. saying it over and over again, and people were big enough. Oh, we finally won against the city uh, at the city ground. I'm like, yeah, against their B team. Yeah, and this is the thing, TJ. We drop points, and in no disrespect, we drop points to these low level teams who aren't who don't have the squad level as Arsenal do. You yeah. know, we lose to them, and and look, that that shows the quality that they, they can produce. You know, so I'm worried about West Ham. They beat us earlier in in December. I'm I'm, I'm worried that we're playing them away. We've gone to their away ground before, and we've lost. We we've, we've dropped Thanks. points. Sorry. You know, so I'm, I'm, of course I'm worried. The, the, the fact that people shouldn't be worried, I, I want to know where your chest is at because I don't know where that's come from. I really don't. 
Because I look back at, and people say, oh, don't bring up the past. I look back at games that we've played and we've dropped points. I'll never forget that Southampton game last season because I was in such a shit mood after that game. We conceded, what was it, two goals in the first, what, 10 minutes? Something like that? Yep. You know, so I'm worried, 100%. And they may you not have the when, 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 right now, time, but... when was the last time we beat West Ham? You guys remember? We beat them at home, didn't we, at one point? Uh, yeah, last season. Think. I'll double check. Jimmy, you know, at the away grounds. Or last at, season, and then we drop, and then we drop points. Then we drop points away. That was when we. That was when we squandered. We haven't, we haven't, beat, we haven't beaten West Ham since Boxing Day 2022. That was the last time we beat West Ham. So, oh. um, yeah. So listen, it's not a ground to be taken. It's not a ground to um, take with a pinch of salt. Um, last two, last two times we've been there, we've dropped points. So. Yep. And listen, their attack, like I said, their attacking options may not be great. They sold four nows. They got rid of Ben Rama, which I thought was really odd because that, that just limits their attacking their attacking options right now. I believe Paqueta is still out. I may be wrong. But even so, Jared Bowen's a threat. Mohamed Kudus is definitely a threat. Jesus Christ. Him versus Zinchenko, people got to be worried. We've got to hope Tommy Asu's in that, in that squad. I swear to God. Because he may not be as fast, but I do not trust Zinchenko against a rapid Mohamed Kudus. I just don't. I really, really don't. And the centre backs have got to be on their on their game again. We can't be having what we had in that goal against Liverpool. Yes, West Ham will capitalise. They'll let us play. I, West Ham are a team. They let you play. They let you have possession, and then they 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 go for you as soon as you make an error. So we've got to make sure we're on our strongest. And again, if we beat West Ham, I'll have my five my ten minutes of yeah, let's go three points, and I'm on to is it Burnley we play next? I'm on to Burnley. Burnley. That's, Burnley, that's yeah. my mindset, and that is how I'm going at it all of this season. I'm not having react. I'm not coming on a match reaction with UTJ and saying we're going to win the league now. I'll say that if it comes to May and we're in a title race still, because we weren't last season. If it comes to May, I'm, oh, I hate this thing on my Mac, man. If it comes <laughs> to May and we're still in it, maybe I'll have a say and say, do you know what? Maybe we can. And then if it comes to the end of May and we've we've won it, then I'll have my parade. But for now. One game as we go, we've still got to play the Champions League games, but people seem to forget that we've got to play. So we've got a lot of games, a lot of tough fixtures coming up. So um, to answer your question, I'm worried, yes, because West Ham are a good team. They may not be on great form right now, but they beat us still. And we haven't beaten them since um, since 2022. So yeah, I am worried. And we've got to take every game as a worry because we could drop points anywhere, man. That's my, that's my yeah. point. No, no, 100%. I agree. Kyle, what do you think? And and maybe I, I want to get Kyle's opinion too, because Kyle said, yeah, there's there's very few people in this squad that could uh, get us get us to a league title. Um, and he, he named Saliba. I personally think Saliba has been kind of been on a stinker the last couple of weeks. I think he's been, and by stinker, I mean he's been playing average. He's been making mistakes that you haven't seen him make normally, right? Yeah. Communication on the back line has not been great. So, do you think the inconsistency on the back line are are, are we going to turn it around this weekend? Do you think the consistency squad wide is going to be a problem, Kyle? Well, I tell you, I tell you, I want to tell you something. No TJ, and I want to say it here, and no for right here. Yeah, we're losing on Sunday, son. We're not. We're me. not Don't... winning this game. We're not winning this game. Ugh. We were lucky against Forest. Which was said already. There, Connor said what he said, and he's right. We played Liverpool, and we played brilliant stuff against Liverpool. Both look at the gods. We were gifted the gods, and I still believe that if we didn't get those gifts, that game we could be still there trying to score a goal because you know the way we are trying to score that. So I think this is a tricky game. I think West Ham is a bogey thing for us. And that stadium is never pleasant to go out to. I hope I'm wrong. I hope we go out there and win 2 3 4 nil. But I have a funny feeling that we lose this game on Sunday. Yeah, and, and here's the thing is I just feel like David Moyes has our has our uh has our number a little bit. You know what I mean? And it's not, it's not even necessarily that they have the squad to do it. I mean, they had a guy, McGinn, scored against us, turned around our back line, sent him to the shadow realm. Like, and this and this is one of the things. Is, and, and, like, look, people are saying, oh, yeah, you're pessimistic, you're pessimistic, you're pessimistic. You're, the reason TJ, that we're TJ, being pessimistic. TJ, TJ, what is it? Like, 
What did you, what did you say it was? It it's was one of those more. things. Go ahead. Go ahead. Thank you. It's one of those things where you got to look at the res the past results and you can't necessarily be inspired. David Moyes has our number. We have not won like cal we have not won against West Ham in a calendar year. They removed us from a League Cup. They've beaten us twice. We dropped three points. We dropped five points yep. against Fulham. Like, yep. we have to genuinely start beating these teams, guys. And it's not like I'm not, oh, TJ, you're not an Arsenal fan because you say that. No, I am an <laughs> Arsenal fan because I am real. I have seen this team break my heart over and over how, and over how again. How dare you have an opinion, like, TJ? How dare you have an, have an opinion? decide, hey, TJ, you're not an Arsenal fan because you didn't say this or you didn't say that. No, it's just like I said this on Flawless the show last night. It's just like, oh, TJ, why aren't you talking with a with a bunch of chess? It's because this team has broken my heart so many times. I wonder how I can get up in the morning sometimes. I know Kyle feels the same way. Like, 30, like 39 years. How? 39 years, TJ. It's a long, long time, my friend. I've seen a lot, a lot of laws, a lot of ups, but mostly laws. <laughs> but I'm just here to tell the tale, and I'm here to tell you that we have been lucky in the last few games. No, except the Liverpool game. We played exceptionally well. But I'm telling everybody this could be a really possible banana slip on Sunday. Mm -hmm. West Ham are no fools. Exactly. Just because you are just because you're dipping in form, that doesn't mean that they can't raise the game for Sunday. Yeah, didn't they? Didn't they recently win a, a European Cup? Sorry, just saying. TJ, people think that we just have to turn up, and this is where we could fall apart. We might have to, the players now might think after their pool game, so who's West Ham? All we have to do is show up, and it doesn't work that way. So let's see on Sunday what kind of balls we have. Yeah, what do you think, Cal? Uh, well, I th oh, I think we're going to. Probably go there and have a draw. I mean, it's just – it's one of those games, if they play the low block and don't come out to play like Liverpool did, we're going to have a tough time breaking them down. But I think if they come out to play, I think there will be times we will we'll have, you know, some opportunities. But other than that, I think it's kind of a draw clear across the board, to be honest. But let's see. I mean, I, I don't expect the same I, – I do expect, because I have standards, I do expect the same energy that we had against Liverpool. But I just yep. don't – it's going to be there because we we haven't shown that we can consistently do that. So I'm just sort of like uh, I'm. It's games at six o'clock in the morning. I'm debating if I'm going to get up to watch it because it could be a nil nil one one maybe a two one. But I don't know. I want to see what we can do after the Liverpool game because and uh, we jumped around like we said like like it was a freaking final. It was a big game, kept us in the race, but we'll see if we can keep up that intensity, bro. Because I'm just I'm just not 100 percent sure. Yeah. No, I'm with you. I'm with you 100%. Um, no, and, and well, and let's get into that, actually. Starting starting 11s. Um, I don't want to see the same starting 11 that we that we had against Liverpool. Um, they play a completely different game than than Liverpool do. Liverpool play open against us. West Ham will not do that because I think they know that they would get killed if they did. <laughs> One thing I will say about Arsenal is that they are we it, our midfield. If we if they give us space, we'll cook. I will say that. How about that for how about that for positivity, people? There's how dare you, CJ? How dare you? No, no, and and, and you you could see you could see it. You saw it again in our in our European games, and you saw it against yep. Liverpool. You saw it against anybody that plays open against us. We can cook them. For, tri, Crystal Palace tried to go toe to toe with us at the end of the game, trying to trying to win. Obviously, it was the last gasp, but mm. we cooked them. Yeah. From Raya Raya into the net in ten seconds, people. Raya to the net in 10 seconds. We are capable of that. But the problem is, is that people know that we are going to bring that and then they will play the low block against us. They'll pack the box and we have trouble breaking it down. Yep. So that, that that's kind of my thought on it. So Kyle, what do you think? Who should start this weekend? What are, what are, you, what are your thoughts on the game strategically? Yeah, I actually, I, like I'm agreeing with you there. That's, I want to see changes. I don't want to see the same team to play it against Liverpool. Both... I'm not surprised. Like you want to have Ryan go on. You have Saliba, Gabriel, Shashenko, and Ben Boyce. That picks itself. Then mm -hmm. you have midfield. You want to have Martin Eddie and Saka. That's in Saka's face because he did go off. 
Now, I don't know, maybe he's training this week. I don't really know, maybe he's face. But you'd expect Saki and Martinelli. So you, you expect Declan Rice to be free. So who's to play? And you expect Odegaard to play. So your question is, who's going to play on the left side of midfield and who's going to play centre-forward? So, Jesus is out injured. So is he going to play yeah. Eddie and Keith here against West Ham? Or is he going to throw number 29 up centre-forward? Mm-hmm. And put Jorginho in beside Declan Rice? So I think that, I actually believe that you're going to see Jorginho, Declan Rice, Odegaard, Mark Nelly, Saka and Havertz up front. The same as we did against Liverpool. I don't see any difference. I hope I don't see it, but I think that that's what we will see. Yeah, no, I agree with you. What do you think, Connor? And by the way, by the way, people in the chat, chill. Jacob's just being Jacob. If you're taking anything personally, don't. Connor, what yeah. do you think? Because I need to clean my room. Okay, which one, Jacob? One of the four in the house. Which one? Are my yeah. What, what did I just man, say? What another man. I'm not cleaning the house. What are you he's fucking put, he's put, Dow, he's pulling you in. Dowie's pulling you in. Get all the oh frog off your fucking channel. Clean anything up. Clean up that shit show of a channel. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, what, did I, what did I just say? He's pulling you in, Dowie. I need this, bro. He ain't got a fucking trophy to back me. Anyway, my 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 starting eleven. My my starting eleven. My start my starting eleven. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep Raya in there because obviously I don't think we're obviously gonna swap Rams though out. Even though I believe, I, and I said it on your channel, TJ. I said it on your match reaction. Sorry, I believe um, Raya should have done better there for the for the Liverpool goal. Definitely a miscommunication between him and the centre backs. So I hope that does clean up uh, this week, uh, this game week. Same. Uh, no, I'm gonna go with a backline of, of White, Gabriel Sleeve, and I want Tommy Asu straight in. We need him back into this team. For me, I just I can't see. Zinchenko v Kudus going well. <laughs> I just uh-huh. can't see it going well. Kudus is so fast. And listen, Tommy Yasu isn't fast, but I'd rather have him there as a defensive option than Zinchenko. So I'm going to go over him. Um, I reckon we'll go back to, you know, I, I think we were playing a bit of a double pivot. I do actually think we were playing a bit of a double pivot against Liverpool, but I may be wrong. But I'll obviously stick with the 4-3-3, even though I would prefer a 4-2-3-1, but it's Mikel Arteta. Um... Do I want to do my lineup or do I want to do Mikel Arteta's lineup? <laughs> what do you think? Give me both. What do you think? I'm going to go with Mikel Arteta's just because screw it. Because oh, mine, mine, mine don't matter. Why are you point. trying to depress me? Yeah, I'm going to go. So Mikel Arteta will probably go with Raya, White, Gabriel Saliba, Zinchenko. I bet he'll put Havertz back in the midfield because I believe, even though I'd rather have, if Havertz had to play anywhere, even though I don't want him to play, he I'd put him up front. Because he's tall, he can be physical, and we seem to lob balls everywhere, so he might as well work there. I wouldn't have him in the midfield, because I think he just stuffs up everything. I think he slows play down, I don't think it works. But I do believe he'll put Havertz back into the midfield, because I think Jesus being out put him in centre forward. Now Jesus is back, he's going to put Havertz in there with Declan Rice and Odegaard, and it's going to be Saka, Martinelli and Jesus. I personally wouldn't play Havertz unless it was at striker, because... That's the only way I can see him working at all. Even though he, do, in my opinion, he doesn't work at all in the team. That's the only way I put him. And Connor Jesus is back, is he? Apparently so. Yeah, I think I think he's. I'm sure Jesus is in there, then, and Havertz in midfield. That's what he's going. Yeah, with. yeah. So but that's that's the problem, man. Because I just feel like, and maybe I'm the only one, but I just feel like Havertz just slows up play so much in the midfield. The, listen, right. I will give him his kudos because listen, I'm not the biggest fan of Kai Havertz. I don't think a lot of people are, and that's completely understandable because he hasn't been great this season. But he got them centre-backs rattled against Liverpool. I can't lie. He got Canate sent off. You know, he got them rattled. And I saw more physical play from Kai Havertz up front than I've seen from Jesus all season. Because Jesus is your type of player. He's on the ball. He doesn't go He doesn't go for um, He doesn't go for defenders. He doesn't one-on-one them. He's on the ball. He's dribbling. He's dribbling. I personally, I would, just to see how it works again, Kill me if you want, Kyle. Come for me. You might want to kill me. <laughs> I, per- I personally would leave Havertz up front because I just don't see Jesus working on the low block because we're going to be playing a low block West Ham. And we've seen, look at how we played against the low block against Nottingham Forest. Fair play, Jesus got a goal. He was lucky to get that, by the way, because I would have killed him because of the shot he missed earlier in the game. With a low block, Jesus doesn't work under a low block, in my opinion. 
If we're going to play a low block, I'd rather just have Kai Havertz just stick him up front. Don't worry about him. If you want to lob a ball in, he may win a header. Just don't put him in midfield. Please, God, do not put him in midfield. That is my lineup. Don't put him in midfield. Please. Please. Well, don't. no, I agree. And I think Mikel Arteta, here's the thing. And we, we talked about this too. It's one of those things. Go ahead, Connor. Go ahead. Oh, he, he, oh, you, he, weren't, he, you weren't prepared. He, you, I wasn't prepared. prepared. And do you know what, TJ? I need a stream deck like you. You Let's need see. a stream deck, and and maybe you can teach me how to figure it out when you get it. Yes, um, I no, it's one of those things where you got. You, we talked about this the other day. Is he's putting Havertz up top because he can't fit into the midfield? Yeah. We lose Jesus. You try to. You try to. You have. You do not play. Pay a player two hundred and sixty oh, oh, bags a week or whatever he's getting, and not play him. You know what I mean? Yep. So you have to play him. So at, at number nine, I agree. He he's getting stuck in. He's making people think. He's getting in space. He's getting into spaces, right? Mm-hmm. But like we saw, he still can't finish. He still yeah, can't true. be yeah. that killer. Where yeah, of course he can be a physical presence up there. But would you rather have a physical presence or would you have rather have a ball moving nine like Jesus if he can ever stay fit? You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And I don't even want to talk. About Enkedi. Enkedi doesn't come into this. No, he doesn't even touch it. So, <laughs> doesn't so even scratch it. If, you're, if, you, if, if we're being if we're being real, if we're being honest, like I'm, I'm kind of I'm, I'm kind of agreeing with you, Connor. Otherwise, you are the only other real option is Martinelli or Trossard. But we need them on he the list. He won't do it. He won't play him there. That's no, he won't. Something. I, 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 there would need to be another injury for that to happen. There would need to be another injury. He will never play Trossard there. Trossard literally played there for Brighton. He played there. Why don't <laughs> you play him there? Trossard. Yeah. I, can't, I can't remember what game it was. Sorry, Carl. One sec. Sorry, Carl. Well, but Trossard. What game was it? I can't remember. But Trossard came off the bench. He was the only player to actually have a go and take a shot on goal. I swear to God, he is the only player in our attack who won't dribble. He'll just go at the net. He'll go for it. Look at him in, against Liverpool. I wasn't talking about Liverpool, but look at him as an example. Literally came on, bang, goes straight. In. He, the thing I love about Trossard is he he is not he's fearless. He will go at anyone. Look at the goal he scored. Didn't had to do it all on his own. He didn't need to worry about nothing, and it was a great goal. Sorry, Carl, go on, bro. I was just about to say that, gentlemen. We are here tonight talking about the lineup against West Ham, and I'm hearing names like Havertz. Starting up forward, Havertz starting the midfield. We're talking about Jay Sewis, who wouldn't score in a brothel. We're talking about we're we're talking about Eddie and Kitty, yeah, who wouldn't strike matches. This is what we're talking. About. I haven't heard that this one. Is, this, this is what we're talking about. Then we're talking about bringing wingers into centre forward. Martin Eddy, Trazard. Why are we having this discussion? We shouldn't be having this discussion. Because if our someone are listening to what I and the rest of us had to say three years ago, we'd have a proven world-class striker playing on Sunday. Yeah. We should not be in this predicament. We should have an out-and-out proper goal score machine. Like what Haaland is for Man City. Right. Like the young fella is from Manchester United, who will be a really good, promising player. He's going to be a good player. That that young fella, what's his name? At Manchester Hoyland. United, there. Hoyland. Hoyland. So we should have a striker, and this conversation shouldn't be happening. And that is the reason, gentlemen. We will not be lifting any league title. Facts. Je- uh, or or let no. Let's go. Let's go over to Dow. Let's go over to Dow. Dow. What do you, What do you, Who do you Who do you got in the starting eleven, man? Um, unfortunately, David Rea. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I would go Georgine J- Jaminio's lineup. To be honest, <clears throat> I think he had Trussard up front, Ramsdale and goal, the normal back four. Just Martinelli on the left, Saka on the right, with Trussard up front. I. Cannot yeah. believe that Jaminho included Rice. I well, cannot believe. Like I feel like I feel like I just saw Jaminho grow up in front of my eyes. You know what I mean? Not, 
Yeah, there's not many other players though. Or Ted of trust to even have in the midfield. True. So, Very I true. Mean, yeah, I guess it is pretty dire, isn't it? If we keep the same intensity that we did against Liverpool, you know, and just play play the high press, it shouldn't be it shouldn't be that hard because that deep their defense isn't that good. Their attack is pretty good. You know, West Ham's they got yeah. an okay midfield, but their defense isn't that good. If we just press them, we should be able to press them in positions till we win the ball back in the attacking third. So but we'll see. It depends on what Arsenal wants to show up, man. It all that depends is. on what if they want to show up or not. Yeah, There's nothing we true. can do at this point. I mean, Arteta can tell him as much as he wants, give him all the tactics, motivation, bullshit, but it's up to them to show up like they did against Liverpool. So maybe we are living off a of Liverpool game toxic, but that's probably one of our best performances of the season, even though we did over-celebrate. So, yep. Yeah. No, I agree with you. Facts. Jamina says, TJ, I haven't grown up. It's just Havertz depressed me too much to include him in the midfield. I still got hatred <laughs> towards Rice. Fair <laughs> enough. Fair enough. How dare I assume that? How dare I assume that? Okay, guys, isn't let's this, go ahead. Isn't, this, go ahead. Isn't, this sad? isn't this sad as a, as Arsenal fans that we have to rise and we have to discuss the likes of Havertz in in an, in an Arsenal squad. Now, there has been a lot of donkeys. Don't get me wrong. Throughout the years, I have witnessed a lot of donkeys. But my God, this Havertz stats for $65 million, I think it's embarrassing. Now, maybe I had to see something in him that none of us do. I don't know. He did play. I thought the man was useless for 75 minutes against Liverpool the other day. I thought the last 20 minutes of that game, he was very good because he threw himself around. He knocked the flag out of the referee's hand and he got Konate sent off and he made a nuisance of himself. But I'm expecting a lot more for a £65 million player, lads. So, you know, it's sad that we're sitting here talking about the likes of Havertz. You know, that's, you see, lads, that's the reason why. And I'm sorry to say this. That's the reason why we will not be lifting any trophies because we are relying on Havertz. We are relying on Jorginho. We are relying on Jesus. And the fact of the matter is they weren't good enough for Man City and Chelsea in the first place. So why are they good enough for Arsenal Football Club? That's the reason why we'll be winning that league. But there's exactly. just better players out there. I mean, I just think that if we had a had a better, you know, director of football than this donkey Adu, who really doesn't know the European market. I mean, we did a whole show on this, I think, TJ, pretty much one day. You know, Edu just doesn't know the European market that well, in my opinion. I mean, he knows practically somewhat of the Brazilian market, but he's given clubs $3 million with our free transfers, which makes no sense. Uh, the sad thing about it, my friend, is... It. The sad thing, my friend, is that Edu sacked all the scouting system at Arsenal Football Club. Mm. I don't know how many people know us now, but that happened. We had scouting systems right across Europe, right across the continents. And mm. what did we do? Sack them all. Because now footballers are all on data. Everything is data, right. data, data. Right. Right. So, we're, so we won't get the likes of Cesc Fabregas and, and the likes of them players anymore. Because you have to be able to see these players before yeah. you bring them in. It's, it's a joke. It's crazy. Sure. That's where football is gone. You have to be athletes. I call them athletes because they're not like footballers of the past. Mm. I don't see the likes of Zinedine Zidane anymore. Dennis Bergkamp. You don't see players like that anymore. After Messi and Ronaldo, people say Mbappe, apart from them three, who really is world class? I don't see that many world-class, exceptional players out there anymore. Not like back in the day. Remember the right. four World Cup looking at Romario, Stoyskov? Right. This list goes right. on, but you don't see that anymore. 94, no, we're talking about Eddie yeah. and Kiki here, these lads. It's a joke. It's yeah. embarrassing. That's true. Exactly. They're, they're like highly tuned athletes now, and 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 they're you know ticky taka with the football and can do some techers and so forth, but but actually going out there and putting it in the effort, some of it, it just it just falls short on them for sure, Kyle. I couldn't yeah. agree with that more. 
All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and move to the weekend prediction segment of the show because Connor has to go over to his bigger channel and do his best of frenemies show over there. Oh, I don't got hate. <laughs> I, ha I, I hate you. Do you know what? You're just, you're just, as, bad, you're just as bad as the Tottenham lot. They're like, oh, it's a Guna channel. Hey, yeah, yeah. Come over no, and join. But... It's a football channel. It's everything football. Oh, <laughs> I'm going to say that to the day I die, TJ. I swear to God. That's, that's totally fine. That's totally <laughs> fine. No, but no, Big Up, we are going to redirect from this show over to Connors yeah. after this one. Uh, but Big Up, Kyle, Big Up, Dal, everybody in the chat, obviously. We have had a rambunctious chat, obviously. Big Up to everybody. Make sure that you are smashing the likes. Make sure you are smashing the subs. And make sure that you are doing so on CMO Sports and Oregon Goon over here to my left. The links are in the description. And um, we will add Kyle's to the title after the show. All right, let's go ahead and go to the infamous spreadsheet. Um, I, I'll, I'll, I'm going to tell you guys, last week was probably the most embarrassing thing I've ever done. Like, it's probably the most embarrassing, like, yeah, prediction no. segment. TJ, TJ, that week was bad. Like, even the ones with my mates, it was a bad oh, week. The whole thing good. was awful. It wasn't good. Who <laughs> saw one? Oh, my God. You saw one, and I'm not I'm not going to tell him that because he's gonna he's just going to come back and do a dance on our graves. Like, this guy – actually, I might I might do him. So, yeah. Uh, Connor, or Hussam won, wins with four. Um, TJ and Dow – with three respectively. If I didn't if I didn't call that Brentford score, I would have gotten one. One. Should've, should've been in the mud. Yep. And then Connor. You blew it. God, that was awful. What an absolutely dross performance. At least you didn't you almost got the Strasbourg Steve Award, bro. Two. Two. Note to self, don't take Connor to Vegas. Yeah. Connor's not going to Vegas. You're on mute. You're on mute, Connor. Mute. This guy, he thinks he's mute. He thinks he's on. He thinks he's not on mute. All I'm saying is, this week <laughs> I am popping off. I am getting free. <laughs> points. You know, I haven't because I, I do these with my mates. By the way, I haven't got a prediction right in about three weeks now. It's actually embarrassing. <laughs> like it's actually embarrassing. Like I've got the team right that won, but I haven't actually predicted a correct prediction yet. This week. Is my week. Let's do this, man. Yeah. Toxic Tash knows when you saw one, you know it's bad. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. This guy is notorious for his bad takes, and we Toxic lost. Tractors. Oh, dear God. <laughs> oh, by the way, TJ, the opening of that uh, flawless and uh, <laughs> flawless yeah, uh, there, troops uh, reaction. Again, yeah. Oh my God! Good. The first five minutes, dude, I was. They crying. just laughed at him for five minutes. Five minutes straight, just laughing at his song. <laughs> that was so funny. That was but top tier. I swear to God, that was top tier. One hundred percent top best. tier. Yeah, you saw him celebrating. Oh my God, you guys are absolutely insane. You saw him is celebrating by like going on streams and and sucking down cigarettes and and giving and delivering his packs. <laughs> By Kim. Big up Hussam, though. I'm not, I'm, I'm not Big up Hussam every time. Big up Hussam every time. All right, we got to get Connor out of here and join. Yep. We got to get to Connor out of here in 20. So let's go in and start doing it. Everton visiting Man City. We will ta start with the guest, Kyle Walsh. Kyle Walsh, buddy. 3 0 Man City. 3 1 Man City. Okay. No, 3 0. 3 0. 3 0. 3 0. 3 0. All right. Got it. <laughs> Connor. Um, I'm going to 3 1. I reckon they'll get a goal. I don't know. City are quite bad at keeping clean sheets, if I'm not correct. They're, they're a bit better. So I'll go 3 1. Yep. Couldn't keep one against Brentford. Dow, what do you got? They couldn't. Um, four nil. Four nil. <laughs> Tell yeah. me right now. I'm getting a prediction right. I'm getting a prediction right. It's no only Everton are scoring. I'm going four one. I think it's, no it's going to be four one. It's kind of funny. Every week, like everyone predicts them to get mad score lines. Like whoever they play, <laughs> like it's ridiculous. What well, do you expect it though? Yeah, well, they're, bit, they're good. They're they're very good. Yeah, I I just it's 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 that point in it's that point in the season where they're just gonna they're just gonna hit it and go. Like, sorry to play spoiler alert, like I did for the Sopranos ending. If you haven't <laughs> seen the Sopranos by now, like, sorry, like, come on, <laughs> twenty five yeah. years, people. Yeah, yeah. The Sopranos is the greatest TV show ever made. 
hands down. Not facts. Absolute not facts. No, it's not even close. It's absolutely not even close. Can I, can I possibly throw Prison Break in there? Because Prison Break is one of my favorites. I never I, saw Prison I Break. I know Prison Break, my speech, but it's nowhere near the Sopranos. Okay, fair, 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 fair. Uh, Breaking Bad to me is... But a really good show so far. I really enjoyed Prison Break. All right, Prison Break's class. Bre uh, no, no, here's the thing. is, is Sopranos, Sopranos <laughs> walked so Breaking Bad could run. That's... that's <laughs> yeah, 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 fair. Breaking Bad to me. That's that's my whole thing. I love Breaking Bad. Don't get me wrong. All right, let's, we got to keep rolling. Uh, Brentford visiting Molyneux. Two one Wolves. Two one Wolves. Okay. Wolves nice. providing Bulls providing some shockers. I I wouldn't want them to start picking up form before they play us. What do you got, um, Dow or Connor? Connor, sorry. Yeah, no, they're they're playing they're playing all right actually. To be fair, you know they they're, they're not they're not doing too bad. They've played Brentford. They've only yeah, yeah. But they've got they've mauled Brentford. Jesus Christ. Um, I'm gonna go for a Brentford are quite bad, but they have got Tony. I'm gonna go for three two. Screw it, three two. Oh, three two. See, and he wonders why he wonders why he gets all of his predictions wrong. No, he does all these weird freaking scorelines. in the FA Cup. I'm not having this bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go one one, TJ. Okay. As much as I want Brentford to win, by the way, as much as I want them to win. Draw. Oh, drop. Sorry. Okay. There's no booze in this, I swear. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I'm copying off of the Oracle, Kyle. I'm going to one. I'm copying off of him. Oracle Volcano. Guys, you get all these Oracle nicknames. Volcano. He's got too many nicknames. He's got too many nicknames. Apparently Borgen or something made up by that fraud, but whatever. <laughs> I'm going to address him. Shout out, Jacob. It's all fun and games, bro. I'm sorry that you act like a toddler. I can't help that. Hi, Kyle. Born is visiting Fulham. Hey. Whoa. 2-1 Fulham. Okay. Connor, what do you got, man? Now, Bournemouth's like my favorite team this year, you know, because they're doing so well. So I'm, I'm going to go for a, uh, I'm going to go for a two-one Bournemouth. I, I, they're my favorite team at the moment. I don't know why, but they're, uh, they're not doing too bad. No, no, they're, they're not doing too bad this season. They'll definitely stay up. Um, Dow. A full of Bournemouth. Um, Screen. Uh, that's got um two-two draw. Uh, two hundred and two draw, TJ. TJ, I swear to God. Get off them Heinekens, TJ. TJ, 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 get the... Quit <laughs> get off them Heinekens. Nah, see? It's not good for you, man. Alcohol-free, baby. that back, Heineken. Alcohol-free. Um, That's a damn yeah, shame. Fulham, Fulham, are, Fulham are good at home. I'm I'm, I'm going... They're gonna. People are going to think I'm copying off of Kyle, but I'm going 2-1 Fulham. You are. You said you are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just copying, just copying off of them. Oh, big up cubed in the chat. Um, the biggest uh, Spurs uh, Arsenal fan we know. I was she so left the bat. Was so funny. She left this the bat cave. She left the bat cave to, to so come funny. and say hello. Still, still, <laughs> cubed brought brought doing a channel, and still was like, you should call it Go Gunners because you secretly. <laughs> Because <laughs> I brought up that she comes, that cube comes on the match reactions, and uh, and 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 so I was like, oh, how oh, are you now? You're going to ask the match reactions, and I was like, yeah, yeah, big up, cubed. I'm not, I'm not yeah, good. he's the last person. He's the last person that should talk because he's been on a couple yeah. of match reactions on this channel too. That's so very he's true. The last that person very that true. should talk. Yeah, true, true. Uh, Kyle, <laughs> Bournemouth. Uh, no, no, no. Brighton, Brighton, Tottenham. Speaking of the shit. Uh... Oh. Jesus, tough game. Uh, two wall draw. Okay. I would take that. 100%. Connor? Yeah, Brighton, Brighton, Brighton. They're an in and out team, aren't they? Um, the Spurs have got all their players back. Son's back. I'm going to go for a 2 1 win to Tottenham, unfortunately. But yeah. Well, you're trying to win here. You're trying to win here. That's yes, absolutely. Great. Smash the smash the likes up, people. Absolutely. Big up Jamino every time. My guy. Dow, what do you got? Uh two one Brighton. God, I hope you're right. I hope you're right. <laughs> well, you're going to I, as well. I don't mind being wrong in the end because as long as Tottenham lose, I don't care if I'm right or wrong. 
<laughs> That's the one game I don't give a crap about is the Tottenham one. I'm yeah. never going to pick them ever to win, yeah. ever. Love it. Um, I'm going three one Tottenham because I really want to win and I think they're probably gonna they're probably gonna turn bright and Son back as well is gonna be a massive boost for them. Son right? Son's back. It's just a matter of where they play him. Yeah, Richarlison's exactly, yeah. on Richarlison's on fire. It just it's unfortunate to see. He um Ange Ange has those guys. Uh, if their back line could get it together and they could get it together on set pieces, they'd be humming. Yeah, yeah sure, definitely. Joe um, Pedro with a brace. Yeah. <laughs> the mid off. Hey, hey, this is actually interesting. Just yeah, 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 yeah. This is a six-pointer, right? Yeah, yeah, no, 100%. Relegation battle. We got Sheffield going to Kenilworth Road. Right. Da- nice. or, uh, Kyle, what do you got, man? Just uh, um, one all draw. One all draw. Okay. Sheffield might be jet, might 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 actually turn up because this is a game that they think they can win. What do you got, Connor? Luton are on goal scoring for right now. I just I, I'm going to go for a and Sheffield are awful. I'm going to go for a three 0 win to Luton. Ah, no, no, two 0 win, two 0 win, two 0 win, two 0 win. I'm myself. Dow, I'm going with that boy Jaminio three 0 to Luton. I was going to copy off of freaking Jaminio, man. Go ahead. It'll oh. be a great copying off Kyle. <laughs> I'm going fans. three one. I'm going three one. I'm going three one. Luton. I think. I think I, Sheffield will, will sneak one. The volcanic oracle wizard. Yeah, they can. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Burnley visiting. Oh, this is gonna be a nightmare. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be a slapping. <laughs> yeah, Kyle. What are you visiting? Who? Uh, Burnley visiting Liverpool. Uh... Four nil Burnley against Liverpool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no. two nil Liverpool. I was about to say, Carl, you need to spec some man. Kyle might not. Kyle might not be drinking, but there might be something else in that drink. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe. Like a motherfucker. It's black court to serious stuff, like a <laughs> natural buzz. Yeah. Oh, dear. What do you What do you got, Connor? Um, I'm gonna go for an absolute Liverpool slapping. I'm gonna go for a four nil to Liverpool. Yeah. Sorry, Burnley. I'm not. They're they're just ill ill prepared. Dow. Um, gosh, well, let's just go for right in between those three nil. What the hell? TJ goes five nil. No, I'm gonna go four one. <laughs> He goes one no, he totally wins it. I'd be so pissed. I'll go they four one. Go Man, I'm really not thinking there are going to be any clean sheets. Really, really going to score, guys. Dang. You never know. You never know. Jaminio says it honestly could be five no. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah. definitely. <laughs> I just don't see them scoring at all. Not I feel like Jaminio has 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 an, has an agenda happen. against. I feel like a Jaminio has an agenda against Spanish goalkeepers. It might just be me. No, <laughs> no, no way, no way. <laughs> Jaminio plays favorites and English DMs. <laughs> Kyle, what do you got for uh, Newcastle visiting Nottingham Forest? Uh, that's another tough game. Um, I want go. I I go two one Newcastle. Okay, like as you said it, Luke James put it up there, and that's that's. Absolutely. I think that's a good that's a good shout, Dal. What about Connor? Or Connor? Sorry, screw you, TJ. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, do you know what? Every week I go for like a like a like a like a hit and miss. I'm gonna go for a Forest win. I'm not even joking there. I'm gonna go for a two-one Forest just because how bad Newcastle have been recently. Okay. Um, that's got two two written all over it, doesn't it? Yeah, sort of. Yeah, I, I, actually, I think that's a good game. So I, I gotta say two two, two two for show. Yeah, Nottingham Forest are tough to beat at home, um, especially now that Afcon. Is, well, actually, a lot of their they have Ivory Coast players on their team too. Um. 
this is probably the toughest one to call out of all of them. Um, just because Newcastle look like shit. But they could beat Forest. But Forest aren't that good either. Right. I'm gonna go. I'm going one nil to Newcastle. I think right. it's gonna be yeah. I'll go one nil Newcastle. That'll probably be an absolute stinker. Um, Arsenal visiting here. Here, here it is, guys. Go Arsenal home. visiting the London home. Stadium. Go Kyle, Kyle, what do you got? Two one, two one, uh, two one West Ham. Oh man, I hope not. I hope not, Connor. I got absolutely trashed last week for not backing Arsenal and saying three one Liverpool. So I want to prove me wrong again. And I am going to go for an Arsenal win this week. I'm going to go for a 3-1 Arsenal win. Okay. Come on, we've got to get Dow. some goals. Go get some goals, man. Dal? Um, I'm going to copy Connor. How dare you, Dal? I'm going 2-1. I've been saying it all week. I'm going 2-1 go Arsenal. Go it's, going to be, it's going to be close. It's going to be a closer thing, I think. David Moyes got, has these guys' number, I'm telling you. Jaminio's going 2-3 three, or 3-2. Three, Bend it Dusty like that, Declan, Glenn. winner. Bend it like that, Glenn. <laughs> West uh, or Man United visiting Aston Villa. Now this is an interesting one, I think. What do you got? What do you got, Kyle? I want to go Man United to one. Dow. Connor. Connor. Jeez, I keep screwing this up. I might as well. Do you know what? I'm not here anymore. I might as well be Odegaard. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, the, I'm, the, I'm the invisible man in the middle, Odegaard. Um, I'm going to go for... Oh, this is... I'm gonna, do you know what? I'm going to go for... I haven't done my draw yet. I'm going to go for a 2-2 draw. Because I do think this could be a kind of draw game. This is a big game, by the way, for the table. Huge game. Yep. Huge game. Um, the separate The separation we were talking about, Connor, might disappear with this one. Um, Dow, what do you got? The separation of United and Villa, you mean? Yep. Yeah. No, the separation, the separation of Man United in the top four. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, true. true. Or top okay. five, I should say. Top five, okay. I should say. Sorry. Um, I've got to put in a Unai Emery masterclass four nil to the villains. To the villains. Okay, yeah. I'm going. Man, Aston Villa just looked terrible against Chelsea, but they might have woken us. They might have. They might have woken the, the sleeping giant a little bit. Um, I'm gonna go two one Villa. I'm gonna go two one Villa just because they're 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 more consistent at home than they are than they are away. But they just got slapped at home. Yeah. Do you guys know who won the reverse picture? Well, Villa Man United. Yeah. I'm pretty United sure it was. United. I'm pretty sure it was Villa. Yeah, it should have been. Right. That's what United were really. Or it was about. a draw. I don't remember. I honestly right. don't remember. Yeah. It was a free two. It was a free two win. That was it. Hoyland scored. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, going actual double. But now I'm gonna go for a two-two for that one. Okay. And then last and least, because fuck Chelsea. Chelsea Ooh. visiting Crystal Palace. Snooze yeah, it's gonna be a snooze fest. Uh, <clears throat> Two one Chelsea. Yeah, you're probably right. Connor, see, I got you that time. One nil Chelsea. I think it'd be so dead that game. One nil. <laughs> <laughs> so dead. Dal? Oh man. Um two one Chelsea. Um, I'm gonna copy Connor again. One nil. How dare you, man? How dare you, man? Can't believe it. <laughs> As usual, people, make sure that you are commenting after the video ends if you would like to be added to the infamous Excel spreadsheet. We all operate a professional setup over here at TJ Warren TV. Everybody, big up everybody who watched. We are gonna go ahead and wrap up and send you over to CMO Sports, the biggest channel on YouTube. Um, he is definitely bigger than this channel. Um, so we're going to let him. <laughs> Actually, no, we're going to let Kyle shout us out first. Yeah, Kyle, again, thank you so Kyle. much. Kyle, thank you so much for joining the show again. Um, we'll have to have you back for the 50th or the 52nd. We got to figure that out. Um, I appreciate all you've done for me and the channel, man. Really, And, of course, having you on here to drop knowledge is always a pleasure, man. So thank you so much. Thanks, Jeff.
big up to you, man. And I'm delighted that we got that little problem sorted there today. So yes. in future, now there'll be no problem me jumping on and stuff like that. Because I've missed a couple of shows because of that. And I was raging yeah. about it. So yes. now that that sorted, I'll be always around, TJ. There's no problem. And I'll definitely be there for the 50s. I was there for the first. I'll be there for the 50s. So I'd just like to say a big up to Dale, big up to Connor, two legends as well, and all the chats, all all the all the chat coming in, all legends, every one of them. I appreciate the support. I love being part of this community, part of the Arsenal family. It's a great thing. 39 years supporting them, and I've met a lot of good people through Arsenal, and including the three of you on the screen here and the people in the chat. So I just like to say a big up, lads. Can't wait for the next show. And you'll get me on the Kyle Walsh Gunner. I have 222 subscribers. I am going to start going back to that. And uh, I was I moved into new property and trying to get that started. And I was going through a few things. But I am coming back to make a return. So I'd just like to say a big up to everyone who support me. And thanks very much again, lads, for having me on the show tonight. It's an honor. Thanks, Kyle. Thank you, Kyle. As usual, man. As usual, you are an yeah. absolute legend. And um, people, uh, <coughs> Kyle's link should now be in the title. So go. All you got to do is refresh. You click that link and then you hit subscribe. He is an absolute legend. Speaks nothing but facts about Arsenal. You will not meet a more passionate Arsenal fan in the world, I think. Um, so you'll have, there are passionate Arsenal fans all over the world, but this guy is the human embodiment of it. So big up Kyle every single time. Thanks so much, lads. Appreciate it. Connor. Yes. Thanks for having me on, fellas. Um, CMO Sports. I'm going live in literally three minutes with Stefan for the Football Frenemy show. It's not the Arsenal Frenemy, it's not the Football Frenemy because, you know, I think it'd be a bit, be a bit more better to hear his opinions on other, on other uh, teams as well. So we're going to talk Chelsea. We're all going to talk Arsenal tonight. We're going to talk United and we're going to talk, uh, I believe, Liverpool as well. So those four teams tonight, come along, watch. It'll be a good debate show. Had to say in the chat, I know everyone won't get on with Stefan, but hey, it's always a good time. And uh, yeah, feel free to hop on over, smash a like and subscribe. But only 24 subs away from 500 now. Oh, so, so we're getting there. We're getting You'll there. be there by the end of the week. I don't know. You'll be there by the end of the weekend, man. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah. Thanks for having me on. And thanks to the redirect TJ as well, by the way. Listen. Absolutely, brother. Yeah. Yeah. Dow. Big up, Carl. Big up, man. It's always, it's always great to I mean, do Big up, Carl, as well. Big up, Carl, as well. Big up, you, man. Dow, I, I look forward to this every Friday, man. Doing the show with you wow. is an absolute blast. Thanks again, man. Try Absolutely. Thank you. Coming in on episode 50, 52. Oh, my God. Uh, thanks for having me on. Good, good seeing you again, Kyle. Always a blast. Arsenal expertise is second to none. Big up, Connor. Glad the show's going well. 500 subs. Jeez, that's incredible. That's faster than we got there, TJ. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Bad. Uh, big up the chat. Thanks, everyone, for coming by today. Leaving a comment, leaving a like on the video. Appreciate every one of you, even if you aren't an Arsenal fan. And, uh, yeah, thanks again, TJ. Happy Friday. Yes, absolutely. And this has been the 47th episode of the American Idiot Show. You can catch us next time during the West Ham Arsenal watch along. We are going to go live 15 minutes before kick as oh, usual. Man. And then you can catch us for the match review as well. Um, until then, if you're watching on playback, make sure you're commenting. I respond to every single site, every single comment mm -hmm. I respond to. And then um, I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be premiering a Tuesday night show. It's going to be a late Tuesday night show. If you'd like to join me, it's going to be a solo show. It's going to be called It's One of Those Things. Don't hit the drum. Um, and <laughs> it's just going to be me vibing with the chat and uh, talking to Arsenal Football Club. It's what I love doing. It's why I got into this business in the first place. So um, feel free to come in, agree, disagree with our takes, but we're going to have some banner. We're going to have some fun. So that's starting Tuesday. I believe we're going to go live at 11 p.m. UK time right after I get off work. So I uh, hope to see you guys there. Uh, come on, you Gunners. We will see you for the watch along and go over and show Connor some love on CMO sports Cheers, until next time. Later guys. Take care.